Tenakoto, 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 Kato. Uh, this is indeed a delightful and humbling honor um, to be recognized by a hammock like this. And I have to admit, it's quite a surprise. Um, and I would like to say that uh, I almost got into journalism education by accident. Um, after working for the uh, uh, French news agency Agence France Press, based in Paris, with a stint in Hong Kong, uh, and then as foreign news editor for the now defunct uh, Auckland Star. I've been in journalism for so long now, I think the global media organisation is no longer the sense that I've worked for. But um, <laughs> anyway, following that, I was headhunted by the University of Papua New Guinea while being a freelance journalist. I ran a, um, a news agency covering the Pacific for something like uh, 10 years. And so that period, I, I ran uh, the news agency. Um, I was fighting for quite a variety of news media based out of my home in Auckland. And it's quite refreshing to actually be self-employed and able to specialise in environmental development and political self-determination articles, and I specialised uh, quite a lot through Indigenous struggles. Um, the issues that I thought were important, rather than what editors thought, um, who I found were remarkably uninformed about the background of quite a range of issues. One of the key outlets I had as a freelance was the London-based Gemini News Service. Many of you probably remember Gemini, um, uh, which was uh, operating for Commonwealth countries in particular, but um, right through globally. So by early 1993, I was recruited by UPNG, and it was a baptism of fire of sorts, straight from journalism into teaching. And I had the, news, uh, the journalism program founded in 1975, and this was in an independence of Papua New Guinea, by the late, a late New Zealand television journalist, Ross Stevens. Uh, he founded that program in Papua New Guinea, the first university-based university um, journalism school in the Pacific. Well, in a country with uh, more than 7 million people, at least 841 distinct languages and cultures, and three main media languages, Tokbisin, Motu and English. The National University probably provided me with the sternest challenges I've ever faced as a journalism educator. All the dilemmas of the nation's political and development issues were right there on the university campus. And many of the nation's intellectuals and gifted commentators and activists were also at the institution. Reporting the truth often depended on cultural biases and conditioning. The most dangerous delusion of all is that there is only one reality. Um, and when customary land reform story that I wrote for New Zealand's The Press, some politicians were arguing, this is in Papua New Guinea, some politicians were arguing for land registration to benefit foreign corporations by alienating more indigenous land for development. A common student response at the uh, UPNG was to seize a government car with state license plates drive them onto the campus and then set them on fire. <laughs> Crime was also rife on the campus. Murders of staff and other students were not uncommon. And on one occasion, off-duty and drunk police officers attacked the university van of Uni Targa, which is our student newspaper. Among the students in the newspaper team were the daughter of the then Chief Justice. However, a front page story carrying a picture of our bloody driver and the number plate of the attackers never led to an arrest. On another occasion, we were shot at. That was real world journalism that reported in real time by the students. Bank robberies also happened on campus and on occasions when protests were being staged by students over an issue, tear gas canisters were fired by police and injured students were treated on the university uh, clinic. Unitawa was the first publication from New Zealand or the Pacific to win the top student newspaper publishing uh, Aussie Award. It was named after a uh, famous uh, foreign correspondent, Australia, Osma White. So the Aussie Award was the Annual Journalism Education Association of Australia, JAA, now called JIRA, uh, that included research into the name. Um, and this was an annual prize giving in 1996. In this case, the award was for a series of investigative journalism reports about national development, the environment, forestry, mining, and human rights. 
And among the stories covered by the students was the Sandline Mercenary Crisis, when Papua New Guinea military commander Jerry Singlebrook rounded up mercenaries hired by the Sir Julius Jan government and arrested them before dawn in Operation Rouse and Quick on the 16th of March in 1997. Rouse and Quick was the code name in Pop Bisson for get rid of the past. Singrock's actions were seen as a virtual coup, but he was not up to power himself, just seeking to rid the country of illegal foreign mercenaries before they went to war, before they went to war on Bougainville. The Pacific would never have been the same if the mercenaries had actually gone into action. The Chan government was ousted from power. In Fiji, when I took over the post uh, as head of journalism at the University of the South Pacific in 1998, I also faced the challenges of students covering high-profile stories in a similar manner as in Papua New Guinea, such as the George Spate attempted coup in May 2000. The interface between practice and politics resulted in critical journalism research case studies Refugee militant leaders from the ethnic cleansing, the ethnic cleansing conflict in the Solomon Islands took refuge at uh, the University of the South Pacific and buried the hatchet there. They told their stories to the journalism program newspaper, Wonsiwara, founded in 1996. The hostage drama in Fiji's parliament when George Spate's henchmen held the Mahendra Chowdhury government at gunpoint for 56 days impacted on the USP journalism program. USB students covered what was called the Internet Coup for their website, Pacific Journalism Online, and newspaper, Wonsuara. But when martial law was declared by the military for 48 hours uh, during May 2000, the university authorities took advantage of the shutdown and closed the journalism website as well. They also tried unsuccessfully to block publishing of the newspaper, Wonsuara. The Australian Centre for Independent Journalism at the University of Technology in Sydney opened a special website for the USB students who carried on filing as normal. Their exploits came to the notice of the International Press Institute's Global Journalist and the New Zealand Listener, which published profiles on them. The USB students won seven student news prizes at their annual Aussie Awards in Australia in 2000. The Spate coup provided a fertile research area for media academics too, with at least five theses being produced out of three countries. When I joined Auckland University of Technology in New Zealand in 2002, my portfolio of Pacific Research and Publication in the School of Communication Studies led to the establishment of the Pacific Media Centre. The centre was given the name, to, uh, given the name in Te Reo Māori, uh, te Omakura, and Te Omakura is the red-tailed tropic bird, and that was uh, established, uh, the centre itself was established uh, with the rationale to support Māori, Pacifica, Asian Pacific, ethnic diversity, media and cultural production, collaborate with other uh, Asian Pacific research centres, and to develop social change and development communication publications. Among the outcomes from the centre has been New Zealand's only international journalism research journal, Pacific Journalism Review, which uh, just celebrated 20 years of publishing last November, and also the first volume with the collection of papers from the symposium that's been launched at this conference in, uh, uh, later in this week, AMAC, as I mentioned earlier today. The Pacific Media Centre has enabled the development of research and publication themed around what was seen as a paradigm shift in journalism parallel to fundamental shifts in political fault lines in the Pacific region. The 2006 Fiji coup, for example, was a flawed attempt to introduce a political system based on democratic principles, a one person, one vote, and an end to chiefly principles, as represented by the Great Council of Chiefs. Dating back to the British colonial era and the Treaty of Session in 1874, the council was implicated in all three previous coups in Fiji. The Bai Marama military-backed regime, now elected with an overwhelming democratic mandate, heralds a significant shift away from the traditional Australian and New Zealand political influences, notably through the Pacific Islands Forum political bloc or proxy. 
There is a shift in the balance of political power to the Melanesian spearhead group and to Asian influences such as from China, Indonesia and Malaysia in particular. A two-year period of state censorship and other conflicts in the Pacific, such as the 10-year civil war on Bougainville, has led to radical and innovative ways of reporting and interpreting the region, particularly in online media. For me personally, it has been a stimulating and challenging to be on an educational journey at this time. Media ethics and credibility remain the biggest challenge in this digital revolution. Now I'd like to um, just uh, round off uh, with a few comments and a few thank yous. Uh, firstly, I'd like to pay tribute to my wife, Della Sene, um, who is herself from, actually from Asia. She originally was from the Philippines and is, who has been a tremendous inspiration and support uh, for me. Unfortunately, she could not be here to share this and she would have loved to have been here at this time. She just returned from a six-week uh, trip to Europe uh, for the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, uh, Centennial Conference and other activities. So I uh, really thanks uh, to Dell. But finally, I'd now like to thank uh, the, um, the Secretary General Ramon Duazon um, and also the Chairman um, Aaron Mohsen and the AMIC Board. And also a special thanks to um, Ara Ram um, my colleague from New Zealand for her support um, and uh, particularly the nomination for this delightful honour. It's been uh, greatly appreciated and I would also like to um, extend personal thanks um, to uh, Martin Hadler uh, who for many years, known uh, for many, many years and I really would like to take this opportunity, Martin, to thank you for lots of uh, support and encouragement uh, over, over the years. So thank you everybody, uh, this has been a great honour to, 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 to share this and to be here tonight. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Kia kaha, kia kaha.